Hello, hello, Marnie here, and today we are playing Doomstone. This is game 6 out of 11 that I'm playing as part of the 19th RPG Maker Horror Game Jam. I think we'll just jump in. Hope you're doing well, and thank you for watching. Uh, the Ishro page does have sort of a story setup thing there, so I don't know how much it'll be explained in game. Ideally it would be, but just in case. This is the story of a death knight. One of the best and brightest undead that swear to serve and protect their kin from the malice of the living, who seek to destroy the undead out of fear, or enslave them as tireless, unfeeling workforce. For ages the Death Knights have fought on the front lines of an eternal war against the living, but thanks to the efforts of their ruler, the tide will soon turn. They have finally created a weapon that will snuff out life forever, so the undead may finally live out eternity in peace. The Doomstone. And, uh, yeah. Now you know as much as me, so... You can jump in, see what's what, hope for the best, and uh, again, thank you for watching. Oh, and you uh, may notice at the bottom, yeah, this is made in RPG Maker 2000, so going, uh, going pretty old school. Should be good. My, early, my earliest memories of the ocean. The sound, specifically. Even now, so many years later, I did find it oddly calming. To lay back, close my eyes, and enjoy the crashing waves. Metaphorically, of course. I don't have eyes anymore. Oh. Know the time to relax and enjoy the moment. Always somewhere important to be. Always something important to do. There's a human saying that comes to mind. I'll rest when I'm dead. Now, now. That's far enough. Just come back quietly and we won't have to hurt you. We don't want to damage the merchandise, would we? Ha ha ha. Even a scrawny kid like you is worth a pretty penny on the orcs. To the orcs. Personally, I haven't found death to be very restful. John! You bastard, I'll kill ye! To kill John in a single blow. It's a death knight. Flee for your lives! Wait, so are we the Death Knight? Okay. Oh, I like the pirate design too. What do we got? Okay, hits all. Do some dark. Ah. <laughs> Think we're OP. You won. That we did. Curse ye. You alright, kid? That was awesome. I was sure I was with Goners. But then you jumped up and like, wham, and... Slow down, kid. I still have to take care of the rest of them. You know how many more are down there? No, there's a lot of them, though. And they have my friends in chains. And Mrs. Wilkins wouldn't wake up and... Don't worry, kid. Just wait here. Not a problem. Thank you, Sir Death Knight. Ah, so we are the Death Knight. Uh, I, th I think we'll stick with the canon name. That'd be, yeah. I didn't know if we'd be playing as, like, the Death Knights, or if, you know, we'd be a human and, you know, they're trying to take over and everything. It's Rowan. My name is Rowan. Thank you, Sir Rowan. No need. Just doing my duty. How did you find us anyway? The parents were sure nobody was coming to save us. Just look, really. I received an urgent summons while fighting in the Orc Realm and was on my way back home. As you do. Were you swimming across the ocean? It's faster than finding a working boat to steal from the Orcs. For me, anyway. <laughs> eh? Do what you gotta do. Casual swim? Still, now that I've got this nice ship, I may as well use it. Anyone know how to turn this around? Oh yeah, I mean, hey, may as well take the ship. Of course, sir. I'll have us back to the death realm in a jiffy. Still, I chose this. To defend my fellow undead from the living who seek only to abuse and destroy us. That is my oath as a death knight. Okay, that's kind of an interesting setup. Four days earlier. It doesn't sound like the battle is going particularly well. I should speak to the general to find out what's going on here. Ok. 
Okay, this is us then. Level 30. Whatever E is, we have a lot of that. Safety save. Oh, decked out in Mithril. We seem to be doing pretty well for ourselves. Uh, for some reason I can only use analog too, so... If the movement's a little awkward, that's why. <laughs> I hope you're the reinforcements they said they were sending. Sir Rowan, yes? That's me, General. What's the situation? The Orcs have camped on the other side of the canyon. The cliffs and narrow canyon are keeping the bulk of their forces at bay for now. We have two squads up on the cliffs to handle the beasts they send there. The strongest have been pushing down the canyon and they've managed to wear down the other knights. Now that you're here though, you should be able to break through and take, care of, take out their leader. Yes, sir. I wish I could come with, but I'm nearly out of mana. I'll stay here to guard the cave. We've been keeping those two damaged to fight inside, as well as a few civilians we managed to liberate in the raid earlier. Make sure you destroy their blood gem, or all this will be will have been pointless. Alright, General. Good luck, Sir Rowan. Can we, uh... Not a pretty sight. The injuries are bad, but the slaves are even worse. I need to destroy that blood gem quickly. I think we can do that. No need to go this way. I trust the soldiers up there to hold out. Alright. Is that a pig man? Interesting. Oh. Alright, touche. <laughs> Did not see that coming. But we have darkness. Nice. I wonder if we are going to be like OP the whole time. I mean, it does seem fitting. Blast, the golems have tunneled this far already. They'll be at the forward camp within the hour. Yet more reason to finish this quickly. I should collapse this to slow them down a bit. The general's been fighting hard enough as it is. No worries. The last clash to must have been terrible, if they weren't even able to bring the fallen with them. I'll have to grab them on the way back to the forward camp when the battle is over. Oh, so that's one of our dead, right. Die, puny skeleton. Eh, we'll see about that. Are these, like, custom designs? Because... I don't know if they're from RPG Maker 2000 or... I'm liking the look. <laughs> I don't know, yeah, they're probably not custom, but... Either way, I like it. Oh, how... <laughs> that's too bad. Silly orc. Although, more of a pig man, but nonetheless. Good job, ghost. Hey, buddy. Oh. Not cool. Finally, a challenge. Come at me, Death Knight. Minotaur. I think we can handle you with a little bit of... A little bit of... A little bit of... Eh, the shade, shade will do. <laughs> oh, you survived. Okay. Got a real fight on us. Impressive. I'll have to bring all my strength to bear. Storing energy? I don't think so, buddy. Oh, that was not... Ah, it's fine. Oof. I didn't mean to use that attack. I said it's kind of awkward because I'm using analog stick rather than a D-pad. I'm not sure why it's like that. All good, though. Impressive, Death Knight. Unfortunately, I have no intention of dying here. Alright. That's... That's something. Uh, can we use skills out of battle? I assume. Oh, we're, oh, we're full health. Huh, do we heal after battle? Huh. Yeah, I don't remember the last time I played a RPG Maker 2000 game. 2003, quite a few, but uh, yeah, it's been a while since I've seen one in 2000. Hmm, I can hear the next platoon of orcs marching down the canyon from here. It sounds like it's still a few minutes away though. If I use this shortcut the Minotaur hopefully provided, I can pr probably make it to their camp and kill their chief before they make it through the canyon. They'd hear the fighting and rush back, so if I finish quickly enough, I won't have to fight them at all, and neither will the others back at the forward camp. Of course, if I'm not fast enough, they'll either pincer me or reach the camp and attack the general. Is it worth risking their safety just to not kill a few orcs? Although if the whole platoon is as strong as that Minotaur, that fight might go badly. Is this a choice? Here goes nothing. I mean, we did save, so I guess we'll see. 
We do have darkness too. Ah, I love attacks that do multiple hits. <laughs> I mean, to multi enemies. It's good. That wasn't too bad. I need to hurry and take out the Orc Chief, though. Well, well. I think they'd send Sir Rowan the Unbeatable. I'm flattered. Explains why Frederick came tearing, tearing past a few minutes ago like death itself was on his heels. Considering the blood jam I can sense on him, I doubt those undead are here willingly. I'd like to avoid hurting innocent slaves if I can help it. He seems intelligent enough. Perhaps he'd value his life more than keeping the blood jam. Of course, if he lives, he could just go right back to pillaging and enslaving my people if he gets a hold of another. I mean... I don't think... Yeah, no mercy. The Minotaur may have escaped, but you won't be so lucky. Ha. Frederick is the toughest son of a bitch I've ever met. Even stronger than me. And his wife makes the best apple pies. I'm not surprised he was able to survive combat with the greatest death knight in history. When he has those waiting for him back at home. Just thinking about them has me fired up. Wait, you, about his family? What? <laughs> I am Grubgerb, the Proud. My warband has held against incursion by the King's Realm nine times, and it will hold against yours as well. Come at me, Dog of the Death Lord. Now, sorry if my reading's a little awkward. This font's, uh... Yeah, I don't know. I'm weird with some fonts. Alright. So, should we try and just take him out, then? Because that may be the... I don't know, because he... Like, Sir Rowan didn't want to beat them if they're slaves, so... Maybe we'll just focus on the chief. You're strong, Death Knight. But I'm not down yet. Ooh, evasion. Good job. Oh, skills. Oh, okay. <laughs> We're definitely on the OP side, it would seem. Oh, okay, maybe the No Mercy choice meant this. I thought that was just towards, like, the, the boss. I guess we don't really have a choice. I mean, they are enemy combatants, I guess. Ha! You're even stronger than I expected from the stories. You're here for the blood gem, right? Honestly, I'll be glad to part with this cursed thing. Ugh, that smarts. You got me good. I know it's foolish to ask for mercy from a death knight, but I don't suppose you'd be willing to let me and what's left of my band live if I give it to you. I... No? <laughs> Time to collect the slaves' remains and go, before another warband shows up. No need to go back this way. I should turn to the general. I mean, I assume a sparing wouldn't have been... I don't know. Well, we'll see. We are a death knight. The civilians in the cave are moving around again, so I assume the blood jam has been destroyed. Yes, sir. Unfortunately, I had no choice but to fight the slaves he had with him. I brought their remains back to be reconstituted later. How did things go here? The beasts on the walls mostly tapered off after you started down the canyon. Everyone here is fine. An urgent missive arrived while you were out. The death lord has ordered you back to the realm. Unfortunately, our ship was damaged and it may take some time to procure another. No need. I can swim. <laughs> Good luck, Sir Rowan. Civilians are looking much more lively. Alright. I should go to the water and get started on my journey back home. That's that. Oh. I was wondering what that was. Alright. Have some darkness. Don't know if this is necessary, but it's fine. It's good to keep practice up, I guess. Hopefully I don't have to fight too many more of those on the trip. Oh, that was actually where we're meant to go. Okay. <laughs> I thought we were meant to go down further. That was my fifth campaign in the Orc Realm. Our realms have been at war for as long as I can remember being undead after their guardian angel attacked us unprompted and trying to wipe out our people. I don't like to brag, but I'm undoubtedly the strongest death knight in the army. My mere arrival can change the course of a battle, and even so, I am only one knight. I cannot be everywhere and kill everyone, and thus the war between our realm, the orc realm, and the king's realm continues without pause forever. I just want it to end. No more suffering. No more bloodshed and death. But if any of the three were to stop, the other two would overwhelm them in months. It would be a slaughter. Is this to be my existence until something finally manages to destroy my death core? 
Maybe. The soul crystal. The magical jewel that death chores, blood gems, and life jewel are all patented after. Uh, the soul crystal. The magical jewel that death cores, blood gems, and life jewel are all patented after, and the origin of the blessing of undeath. It is also the core of the death realm, and so cannot be moved from this spot unless it is destroyed, hence the creation of death zones that carry a portion of its power to other realms. Supposedly, the Death Lord has not left this room since he used the crystal's power to become ruler of this realm. How you doing, buddy? Rowan, you have returned. Yes, my lord. I am at your service. It is time. My experiment is complete. I have combined the powers of all three crystals to create this. The power of a death core to twist life into an eternal state of undeath. The power of a blood gem to warp the will of its victims so they serve the cause of death forever. The power of a life dew to conceal my armies with false life so that even their precious, even their precious angel will accept her doom with open arms. My ultimate weapon. My greatest curse upon this foolish world. My doomstone. Rowan. My greatest knight. My most loyal servant. You will take this stone to the border village of Amaror. Aramor. You will kill everyone there and bring them into our fold. You will ambush the angel Ophiel when she arrives to heal those who have fallen ill from the plague. You will do this and the world will be ours. Our people will finally know peace. No more will the orcs and their beastmen allies enslave our children to work in their mines and provide labor for their armies. No more will the foolish humans genocide the undead out of fear for their way of life. You will finally know the peace of death. Yes, my lord. Your will be done. Do we, uh... So this is the Death Lord's magnum opus. It doesn't seem like much at first. It looks just like the Death Core embedded in my shield, which I used to heal my injuries between battles. Ah, I see. But it feels different. Darker. I was given my Death Core when I took the Oath of the Death Knight. When I focus on it, I feel the warmth of those I'm fighting to protect. Looking at this, I feel only malice. The Death Lord's hatred of the living for the crimes they have committed against the people of our realm. That, and the malice of the souls the Death Lord must have used to create this cursed jewel, for the crimes we have committed upon them. If I succeed, the war will be over. The King's Realm and the Orc Realm will both fall before our might, and we will be free to exist in peace. Okay. It's quite the responsibility. <laughs> Alright, we already checked that. Alright, well I guess we're off to um, save the realm. Sort of. Sir Rowan. Sir. My name is Recruit Jeffrey, sir. At ease, soldier. Did you need something? Sir, no, sir. Simply speaking to you is an honor, sir. Actually, sir, I was wondering if you would be willing to spar with me, sir. It would make my day to get some pointers from the legendary... That's plenty, soldier. I'd be happy to give you a few tips. Jeffrey up here. We just, uh... Just fighting. Ah. Sorry, Jeffrey. Oh, I'll be feeling that in my bones for weeks. Still, that was amazing. Thank you so much, sir. I'll never forget this. This is the happiest day of my own life. I'm not sure why the text is doing that. Like, when it speeds up like that, I'm not clicking anything. It just, uh... Sometimes it's fast, sometimes it's not. So, Rowan, you don't know me, but I was one of the slaves you rescued in your most recent battle in the Orklands. I was so excited to get back home that I accidentally flew all the way across the ocean ahead of everyone else. Not that I remember the experience very clearly. You don't? No, the orc who was carrying the blood gem I was chained to must have cracked it. As you must know, blood gems are created from the energy of the energy of the orc realm's crystal, but as an imitation of a death core. So like a death core, they can only be destroyed by an undead. But it, is a but it is possible for the living to damage them, which sends all the undead under its control into a dreamless sleep. Not that the beasts do it very often, of course. Most of them couldn't care less for the suffering of a few undead slaves. You seem to be very well informed about how all the workings of crystal fragments. Of course. I'm something of a scholar, you see. I have a library near the border and everything, which I really should be getting back to. But I wanted to come and thank you first, so thanks. Ah, uh, no worries. What about you? I know you said it wasn't necessary, but I wanted to come and thank you anyway. 
If you hadn't come along, I'd be getting worked like an animal in some beast's mind. Thank you for everything you do for us little guys, Sir Rowan. I am wondering if there wouldn't be two more people here if we chose that other option when fighting. Hmm. Hmm, Aramore. I wonder if it's fate. I may not remember much of my life before I died, but I do recall the name of my hometown. Oddly, thinking of returning summons a bittersweet feeling in my cold heart. I don't know why. It's a town of the living, and I haven't been alive for so long I don't remember when I died. Those who live there will now try to kill me on sight, or flee for their miserable lives. And yet I cannot shake the feeling that the place is important to me. That I am about to make a mistake. Why? Why should I care about the tiny insignificant lives of a few unenlightened peons who have their whole unlives ahead of them? Perhaps it's, perhaps it's this tombstone. The sheer pulsating hatred of it has my mind spinning in circles. I've never balked from committing atrocities before in order to keep my people safe. This is the best chance we've had in years to finally end this eternal conflict. Orphea will not stop until the Death Lord is gone and her sisters are freed, but when she wins the undead will be purged. I must use this death stone to end her first. There's no choice. Here it is, the town of Aramore. I should get to work without raising the alarm. Luckily, everyone in their houses because of the plague. Even so, for some reason I'm still feeling off. Perhaps I should find my old home and put these feelings to rest first. Maybe... Hello? I'll be back. Who are you? Now, I know what this looks like, but I'm not here to steal from this building. In fact, I'm actually doing a security checkup. Wait, you're not from the innkeep. How did a death knight get this far into the king's realm? No matter. I'm Cameron, the greatest thief in the lands, and you'll go no further, fiend. No. Oh, good luck, buddy. Don't think it's going to work out so well for you, though. Have some, have some shade. Yep. <laughs> I guess I'm not the one going any further. Go ahead. Do your worst, monster. As the curse takes hold, the man's defiant grin shatters. He screams in agony as his body begins to rot away while he's still alive, eyes bulging as his flesh melts away like a candle. His goggles tumble to the floor along with his hair, leaving only a featureless skeleton, indistinguished from any other newborn soldier of the Death Realm. Death to the living. Oh, okay. So you're actually... Alright. I guess you still get to live, sort of. Ah, uh, why's it got to be a kid? <laughs> We're not afraid of you, skeleton. My big girl's going to kick your butt. Do skeletons have butts? Not the time, Finley. Oh, man. I don't know if this is a horror game or just a depressing game. <laughs> I mean, it says defeated, right? That's not dead. Johan, I'm here, little bro. The younger brother screams and muffled as the older holds him closer, fighting through the pain to try and comfort him as long as possible. His efforts are in vain. When the curse dissipates, all that remains are two skeletons, completely indistinguishable. For some reason, the, the younger has grown taller, just to crush what little individually could have remained. Death to the living. Death to the living. Man. Yeah, I don't, I, this game so far, like, I feel like it would be more a horror game in reverse or something. I don't know. It's more like, uh, it was more like JRPG where we're just playing the bad guy or something. The very bad guy. Going after the bedridden woman while her armed husband is still standing around would be unwise. I should kill him first. Halt, demon. I may not be as strong as the adventurers, but you'll not touch a hair on my wife's head as long as I live. Rah! Well, you're not going to be living long, unfortunately, buddy. But kind of OP. Angela, my love, I'm sorry. The man's legs buckle from under him before the curse has even had a chance to start eating away at his body. He gives one last fallen look at the nearby bed before his eyes roll out of its sockets and splatter on the floor. The newly minted skeleton soldier stands up, armor fa falling away, sparing not a glance for the wife that occupied his last thoughts mo just moments before. 
His wife, clearly bedridden from the plague, is only able to muster a soft whimper at the death of her beloved. Death to the living. Jensen. My Jensen will save me. She seems to have become delirious from the pain. At least this one will be a mercy. She will suffer from the ravages of the plague no more. Man. Bye. This is just depressing, man. <laughs> For some reason, the curse lingers in the air around the girl, rather than entering her immediately. It takes a few moments for her addled mind to understand what is about to happen to her, but when it finally sets in, her eyes widen in terror. Finally, the curse acts, faster than I've ever seen before. The girl is able to muster one final shriek as the magic assaults her entire body at once, vaporizing everything but her bones. Her dress and bedsheets flutter slightly from the force before settling down into the, her pristine skeleton, stripped clean of life. Even then, her remains rattle with mortal fear for a few moments before they steal, the curse finally cleansing all resistance from her mind and leaving naught but a perfect soldier. Ay ay ay. Well, moving on. More fun times ahead, I'm sure. Do we go to the inn? Guess we'll go to the inn. Ho, oh, a death knight has come to Aramore? I've destroyed ten of your kind, monster. Give a cheer, everyone. Drinks are on me for number eleven. Eh, uh, we're kind of OP though, buddy. I don't think it's going to work out as well as you're hoping. Oh, okay. You can take a hit, I give you that. But still, only two. Impossible. You want to me a death knight? What are you? We're rowing, man. The Dark Elf stumbles back, knocking the drinks off the table and shattering them on the floor as they drunkenly attempt to flee their inevitable fate. The curse catches them in the back, causing them to trip and face plant to the floor. They remain there, totally motionless, for a few excruciating seconds. Then their body twitches, once, twice, three times. Without warning, their skeleton tears its way out of their back, leaving the rest of their body on the floor to disintegrate. And scattering scraps of their clothing into the air, the newborn skeleton spins on heels to face me and offers a crisp salute as it steps back to the table. Death to the living. Man, it's so quiet. O oh, Orpheo, deliver the soul of your faithful servant unto the next life, that she may serve your righteous cause. Man, why couldn't they at least all be soldiers or something? Of course we won. For some reason, as the malice of the doomstone swirls in the air, I get the urge to look away. Uh... I mean... I, we, we did it, I don't feel like we get to look away. The woman manages to continue her prayer, her voice growing strained as her body begins to betray her. Her hands, clasped together in devotion, begin to twitch and the left wrenches violently, tearing her arm from her shoulder and cutting the prayers off as she cries out in pain. She tries to begin again but her jaw unhinges, and she vomits her tongue onto the inn floor, followed by the rest of her internal organs. Her knees, folded in suppl supplication, begin to shake, and then suddenly straighten into a violent motion that slams her forehead into the counter before her. Against her will, her back straightens and her left arm raises to face me in a crisp salute, still holding her right. Her clothes fall away, her body totally transformed into an empty skeleton below her upper lip. Her closed eyes finally force themselves open, and her head tips back to make her see exactly what has become of her, while the rest of her flesh crumbles away. The resulting skeleton calmly snaps its right arm back into its shoulder socket and salutes again, ready to serve the cause of death. Death to the living. Man. Now we've got the fighters, eh? Can we fight two at once? Hmm, I've never fought a death knight before. Bring it on, you bag of bones. I feel like you guys should at least group up or something. Can you survive more than two? Oh, I went auto, whoops. That's... oh. Auto just repeats, okay. I gotta say, I really like the character designs for uh, RPG Maker 2000. Like, the battle scenes are... it's good. Oh shit, please. I don't want to die. 
For some reason, as the malice of the Doomstone swells near, I get the urge to look away. And I say, I, I don't think we deserve that. The curse looms malevolently over the girl as her earlier bravado leaves her. She begins to move as though trying to flee, but a great skull manifests out of the miasma and catches her head in its mouth before she can escape. Her hands latch onto the skull to try and pull it off, but it simply bites down, ripping through her screaming mouth and tearing the top of her skull clean off. Her cries are no longer muffled by the giant mouth, continuing to echo from her lower jaw as she flails around, somehow still alive. Finally, her flesh begins to rot, turning a putrid shade of green as her body fails her. Her movement slows and then stops completely, and her mind fades away. Death to the living. Man, what is with these descriptions? Oh, what are you... Okay. That is definitely not quite a skeleton. Die. Oh, I think it's going to be you, buddy. You have a cool design, though. That's something. Oh, yeah. Che, to think I, Tanabe, the greatest shadow warrior, would fall to a mere pile of bones. You have disgraced me, but I will not die here. Feast your eyes upon my incredible shadow walking technique, honed by generations of... The curse cuts him off. Slamming into his chest and knocking the wind out of him. Uh... Wait? Finish him? I mean... He's already dead. The curse slams into him again. This time in Corporal, it vanishes into his ninja robes. He is the only moment to grab them in confusion before they begin to constrict. The ninja's ramblings are out, cut off as they continue to tighten, going beyond what should be physically possible. His face turns red, then blue, until finally settling on a grape-like shade of purple. Still, the curse continues to compress until the man pops in an explosion of gore, splattering viscera all over the inn floor. His robes continue to curl, wadding into a ball the size of a fist before unfurling to reveal a newly created reaper. Oh, death of the living. Interesting. I wonder what determines what they become. Ah, just when I was starting to get bored of the beasts in these lands. I am a duchy, fierce samurai of the east, and I shall be your doom. Well, good luck, buddy. You got a cool design. That's, that's something. It's about all that you guys seem to have going, though. You do like a third of my damage and can only take one or two hits. Ah. Just still my job, right? Yeah, maybe. The curse floods into the man's face. Obscuring up from view and paralyzing him. I'm not sure what exactly it's doing underneath all that armor, but judging by the screaming, it isn't pleasant. Eventually, the screaming falls silent, and a helmet tumbles off a ghost pops out. The rest of the armor remains suspended for a moment before tumbling to the ground in a heap. Death to the living. Oh, you're a ghosty. You will not claim one more life, Death Knight. Your road ends here, at the hands of the great hero, Dallas. That is classic hero design. Unfortunately, though... I do have shade. Oh. <laughs> I thought he might put up a little more fight. Grrk. Death to the living. Some hero you were. Oh, that was brief. Well, <laughs> every other one was like way, way over descriptive. Not that one for some reason. Alright. Moving on. Maybe we do a save. I don't know why. Everything's bad. Hello? What? A death knight? Here? And that jewel? What a horrible curse. I'm warning you. I just- I knew how to fight, so just stay back. Uh, I wish I didn't have to fight you. That's my orders, though. You won. Did I? Please, stop this now. It's not too late. Ah, uh, it is, unfortunately. The girl falls to her knees, writhing in pain, but nothing else seems to be happening. No flesh melting or rotting. I don't think this is supposed to happen. Huh. Of course not. It seems whatever dark curse your bauble holds is not enough to overpower the one I already have. Hmm? I warned you. The girl starts tearing at herself, and this time her skin begins tearing away. But instead of dying flesh, it falls off to reveal fur? Rather than running away, her muscles seem to be gaining definition. Her frantic self-mauling aided as her fingernails distort into long claws. She thrusts her chest forward seemingly involuntarily as her spine pops out with a mighty crack, the first of many. 
As she slumps forward again, she's clearly grown taller, and her wolf tail is now visible among the remains of her shredded dress. The girl finally managed to pull herself upright now. Digit grade... What? Atop now, digit grade... Digit grade? I, I've never seen that word in my life. Managed to pull herself upright... Atop... <laughs> The girl finally manages to pull herself upright atop now digigrade legs, kicking what remains of her shoes from her monstrous paws. She lets out one final scream that smoothly transitions into a wolf howl as her face stretches into a muzzle. In all my years, I've never seen one personally, but I've heard the stories of the creature this woman has become. A werewolf, as strong as ten men and with an appetite to match. Of course, this one looks like she wants to recover from the exertion of her transformation by gnawing on some bones. Well... We'll see how you do. Three hits, maybe? We're kind of OP, unfortunately. I mean, not unfortunate for us, but for everybody else. Ooh, okay. Might have to actually heal. Oh, nope. All good. With one last yowl, the injured werewolf turns and sprints away, smashing a hole in the wall as it goes. That was unexpected. Perhaps I should be more careful. Yeah, maybe. I was not expecting that either. And what's with this house? Jewels? Okay, well, you can't click on anything, huh? Wasn't expecting a werewolf. Let's go check out here. Uh, are you here to kill me, Mr. Skeleton? Or is it Miss Skeleton? For some reason, the girl's lack of fear gives me pause. But then I feel the doom so pulse again. It's mal malice hungers to add more souls to its endless pool of misery. Death for the living. Sorry, small one. You won. But did I? Did I really? The Doomstone's curse reaches out as the life begins to fade from the girl's eyes, but some part of me suddenly lashes out against it. The death core in my shield shines bright, brighter than ever before. Not enough to stop it, but enough to temper its hatred, for the br bravest instant, enough to make it painless. A little girl dies instantly, a corpse slumping over like a puppet with its strings out. The death core within my shield dims, its strength utterly spent and then shatters. The Doomstone fits the same slot within my shield with ease, like it belongs there. The ghost is silent, awaiting orders. She has fallen into the dreamless sleep, as though the doomstone were cracked, even though it remains totally unharmed. The door to the house opens suddenly, revealing an old woman standing in the doorway. She lets out a quiet wail at the sight. Oh Libby, not you too. Sorry. Poor girl. She didn't have much time left to live, but she enjoyed every moment of it. I suppose with her gone I don't have much reason to fight back. Come, get it over with. I made my peace with death long ago. Man. I stand by I don't feel like this is a horror game. It is just a depressing game. Doom. Kills an enemy and steals their soul? Should, is that a... Should we be using that? Oh my. That's just insta-death. The stone's curse lashes out, enveloping the old woman's flesh. Everyone else the curse has touched has suffered excruciating pain as their body rubbed alive, and this woman is presumably no different. But her face doesn't move an inch, as though carved from stone. Even as it crumbles to dust, she doesn't let out even a whimper of pain. Death to the living. Yeah, I mean, this, this like... It's like we truly are just playing the villain, right? In the worst way possible. Like... Yeah. The door appears to be locked. I could just break it down, but I'm normally trying not to raise the alarm. Perhaps there's another way in? Uh, chimney? That I'm somehow on the roof? Window? Oh, that's where the werewolf smashed through. Oh, that actually, yeah, actually became a door. Another open window. How convenient. Hello. Oh, angels have mercy. Please, you can have the rest of the villagers if you want. Just please let me live. Wow. 
Oh, you're the mayor. Oh, good mayor. All right, you can go bye-bye. Don't even mind for this one. If he wasn't the mayor, like, I could at least understand that, but not good man. I mean, not to imply he deserves death, but, you know. For some reason, as the mouse of the Doom Tomb swirls in the air, I get the urge to look away. Nah, you can't do that, buddy. The cursed miasma pokes the man in the nose, causing his eyes to scrunch up in confusion, and then widen into a panic as he realizes he can no longer move. His breathing begins to rapidly increase it in pace as his skin begins to dry up, all the moisture being sucked up through his nose into the cursed cloud as though it were drinking from a straw. It's work complete. The curse retreats, leaving the old man frozen in a totally des desiccated body, unable to move anything except his eyes. It stops, allowing him to save the terror of the villagers, who feel as they meet their ends, and then swiftly rushes through him, exploding his entire body into a massive cloud of dust and leaving a clean skeleton behind. Death to the Living I wonder why every single one has these vivid descriptions except for that one in the inn. It's kind of odd. No, get away from me, fiend. Well, I will shortly. Sort of. You won. Maybe. Maybe. But at what cost? For some reason, as the malice of the doomstone swirls near, I get the urge to look away. You don't get to look away, buddy. Even mortally wounded, the man attempts to flee, only for the curse to rush past him and cut him off. It begins spinning, the asthma rapidly whipping up into a vortex with incredible speed. The fool barely has time to shout before the vortex swallows him up, obscuring him from view. Nonetheless, the process of the man's breath is still clearly visible as it begins to flay him alive for his cowardice, scattering pieces of him in every direction until it finally dies down, leaving only a skeleton behind. Death to the living indeed. Ay ay ay. I need to sip my drink, this is a lot of reading. <laughs> There's a surprising amount of reading for uh, how long it is. Ah, oh, not little Timmy. Stay away from my baby. Ah, oh, I wish I could. But with the bad guy. Not sure what else I'm supposed to do. You won. Maybe. No, please, I beg of you. He's already sick. The angel was supposed to come heal him. For some reason, as the malice of the doomsome swirls in the air, I get the urge to look away. You don't get to do that, buddy. We've been over this. The woman throws her arms out, trying to shield the bedridden child from the doomsome's miasma. At first, it seems to be focusing on her, but it only paralyzes her before rushing past. The woman's face stays locked in shocked expression, unable to see what is happening to her boy behind her, as the miasma soaks into the bed ominously. Skeletal hands begin sprouting from the bed and latching onto the ins what incessnate what not familiar with that either. Skeletal hands begin sprouting from the bed and latching onto the insensate boy before somehow dragging him through the covers in a fountain of blood. Moments later, a ghost floats out of the bed and circles around into the woman's view before hovering above the place where her son once lay. Only now does the curse allow the woman to turn around and see what has become of her child. Only for a moment, however, before it seizes control again and begins to march her across the room towards her vanity mirror. With every step, her skin and clothes begin to crack and flake off, nearly causing the woman to stumble when her shoes crumble beneath her before the curse writes itself. By the time she reaches the mirror, only a skeleton remains, which reaches out hand to the mirror in seeming disbelief before snapping to attention. Death to the living. Death to the living. Man, I suppose I can unlock the door now. It is done. The villagers are dead. It is time to prepare for the angel's arrival. <laughs> Please, Miss Orpheo, my son has taken a turn for the worst. Please come help him. Your radiance. I may not be able to cure them, but I should be able to keep this man's wife alive until you get back. Very well. Show me to your child. What treachery is this? I can't move. So Hans appeared. Okay. I mean, we do, can we use Doom? Oh yeah, that's that's insta kill, isn't it? 
So Frederick, so the Death Lord thinks this move that will checkmate. So the Death Lord thinks that the move. Sorry. So Frederick. So the Death Lord thinks this the move that will checkmate my kingdom. My knights are just for show. My actual guards are the guardian golems that cannot be subverted by your undead trickery. Despair at your failure and cease existence. Yeah, but I can just kill you, right? Like, I can just do that. Oof. Yep. <laughs> Bye, King. I may not be able to subvert them. But I don't need them when I can just kill you. Oh, okay, wait. I don't know how I feel about us being on the same page here. Curse you. You won. Again. Did I? No. I cannot fall. Henry. Your Majesty, look out. What you have done here today. All these people snuffed out like insects. Is that all they are to you? Misguided slaves that simply need to be helped along to their eternal undeath? No. I know I do not have the strength to defeat you, but I must try. Our lives have meaning, dammit. For every human in my realm, all the joys and sorrows and wonders they experience in their lives, I'll fight until the end. Well, I can respect that. But I gotta use this. Yeah. Oh, alright. You're strong. I got Doom though. I'm sorry my people. I failed you. Damn you. If your Death Lord wants me so badly, then I'll go to him myself. I'll be sure to return your ashes to him when I'm through with you. Even the mightiest of angels shall be laid low. The other soldiers have already wounded her. All I have to do is finish the job. The death realm will be safe forever. Although we're almost dead. Oh. Shit. Oh, I wish I healed. That's... I kind of assumed we were going to get healed automatically between battles. Oh, that really sucks. Oh, I gotta do all that again. Ah, <laughs> uh, man. All right, I'll, I'll catch up with you guys soon. Yeah, it's just uh, it's really the the reason it was a bother. Just to clarify, because uh, I was kind of being negative there. Um, is you can't speed up the text in this one, so I kind of just gotta wait through it all. Like uh, in um newer versions, like even quite old still versions of RPG Maker, you can like hold A or whatever to like speed it through. Whereas you can't do that in this one, so it's a uh, it's a bit of a slog to repeat. Oh, I just realized too, of course, we wouldn't have been healing, because based on what the game said, right, we wouldn't heal between battles like when we died there because the stone shattered, right? We put the doomstone in our shield, which I assume is, you know, different. That doesn't heal us every time. Uh, I didn't think about that. If your death lord wants me so badly, then I'll go to him myself. I'll be sure to return your ash when I'm through with you. Orphiel appeared. Even the mightiest of angels shall be laid low. The other soldiers already wounded her. All I have to do is finish the job. The death throne will be safe forever. And that's if we heal up. <laughs> Alright, now we're okay. <laughs> she hits pretty hard. But I, oh, wait, do we not have enough for Doom? Oh. Ah. Well. Also, interesting. Revives a dead eye ally at 100% of maximum HP. Why do we have that attack when we can't use it? That seems strange. I hadn't really thought about that. Oh, there we go. <laughs> you won. So, all is lost. Oh, alright, we're back here. <laughs> I know you said it wasn't necessary, but I wanted to come and thank you anyway. Oh, okay, same, uh, same stuff. Go see the Death Lord then. I don't know how or when, but I promise you, someday your world of peace is going to come crashing down. Nothing can last forever, not even you. I suppose we'll just have to wait and see, or at least I will. You'll be a statue. Ah. Hi. It is done. At long last, the undead realm will be forever. Thank you, my friend. Death to the living. Yes, you're right. There is more to be done. Come, walk with me. There is somewhere I wish to visit.
Do you remember the speech? I remember the sound, my lord. Nothing else. What is important to us? So you remember that we were friends before this then? Or perhaps that's simply my will leaking through the doomstone. It doesn't really matter. I have one thanks to you. I have forever to fix this. To recover what we once had. At long last I have created a world where I can be free to exist. A world that will not spare me but for simply being born. This is where I swore to make my dreams a reality. And this is where they came to fruition. Together and forever, my dearest friend. Thank you so much for playing my first game all the way to the end. Or an end, rather. In case it wasn't obvious, there are two endings to this game. Whichever you reached, I hope you enjoyed the experience. Oh, is there? A game over. This was like one other game did this. <laughs> where it popped up the game over screen. Which I feel like they're using as like the end screen. But that's more meant to be like a... Seems weird to get that. Okay. Um, I assume the other ending would be... I don't know, okay, so... Well, that was Doomstone. Uh, I do have thoughts. Um, so, for, for one, when we got to the village, there was mention of it, like, being our hometown and stuff, and said about, like, finding our house, but nothing came up from that. Like, none of the houses had anything we could click on or any indication of being our house or anything like that. So, I'm not really sure what happened there. Um... I was a little bit unclear on what happened with our stone, too. Like, why it actually broke with that little girl and stuff. Like, was there meant to be some implications there? I'm, I'm not sure. Um, I'm not, also not sure about why we kept having the option to look away or not. Hmm. Yeah, I don't, I don't know how I feel about this one. Like, it's okay. Um... I I feel like the biggest weakness for this is the fact that, like, 90% of the text are the descriptions when you kill people. <laughs> like, I, I feel like I would have preferred a bit more of that elsewhere. Like, yeah, I don't know. I also don't really feel like I would call this a horror game either. I mean, it's certainly horrific for the people we were killing. But I wouldn't really call it a horror game. It it feels a bit more like a standard JRPG. Except the bad guys are winning and we're playing the bad guys. So I, I really wouldn't call it a horror. Um, but you know, horror is not an exact thing, I guess. Yeah. Because I guess you could say it has horror themes. But yeah, I don't know. I, I'd feel mixed on really calling it a horror though. Um, said it feels more like a, a darker JRPG where you're playing the bad guy type of thing. Um, yeah, I, I don't know how to feel about this one. I, I think there's... It kind of makes me feel similar to when I played Cold Death uh, recently as part of this game jam as well, where it felt like all the right pieces are there, but it could be done a lot better. Um, and I think with this one, there was just... So much text that went into, as I said, the descriptions of when you've killed someone. Whereas I would have loved to just have more of that text elsewhere. You know, actually building up a little bit of history, a bit of what's going on in the world. Um, you know, like the difference with the Orc realm and stuff. Like, I, I just, yeah. I, I think more more text in that way would have been better for me. Um, even if that still stayed the same. But I would definitely take that being cut back significantly to get more like lore and world building in there. Uh, which you can still only do so much. It's a short game, game jam, all that stuff. But yeah, I, I just think um, the areas of focus could have been spread out a little bit differently. Um, yeah, I, I do think it was f like, I, and us being OP, I feel like it's a mixed one too. Like I feel like for the actual setting and the setup and everything, it completely makes sense. But at the same time, it is a combat-oriented game. Like, there's more combat than anything else. Uh, but you mostly one-shot. I think three was the most. But yeah, most was one or two hits. Which, again, makes sense. Especially when you're in a village like that. But there wasn't much difference between the fighters and the normal villagers. But again, we're apparently, like, the strongest Death Knight, so it does fit. But it's still a game, so... 
if you're just looking at combat as part of the story, I feel like, you know, that does make sense. But yeah, I don't know. I said I'm, I'm a little bit mixed on things. Uh, I did mention being a first game, so if that's the case, then I, I do encourage the developer to continue, you know. Um, there is plenty of room to grow in a good way. Like, I I don't think this was a bad idea or anything. Um, I, I do like the idea of setup. I like the idea of games where you play the bad guy. Um, but yeah, I, I think just said, I, I think the priorities in different areas and would have been better sh being shifted around a bit. Um, less focus on death descriptions, a bit more on world building, maybe a couple of other areas. Um, yeah. I was, I really wish you could skip the text. That was on me. I should have saved. Um, but yeah, it, it's a real slow go getting through the text because you can't speed it up. So that was, uh, unfortunate when we died. But again, that was more on me. I should have saved. And that's not a developer issue. Obviously, I think that's just the way it is with RPG Maker 2000. I'm, um, yeah. Not a huge deal, obviously. Yeah, I, I do wish there was a little bit more there. Um, with even what was there. Like, even if we're not talking about necessarily a ton more world building or anything. I was very unclear as to the Death Lord thing, that we know them. Like, were we friends? Were we... Is that our father? Is that, like, I... Well, he said friend, so I guess not that. But, like, I feel like that combined with the mention of it being our hometown and then that finding our house thing. But then there was nothing really about that. I mean, unless we had to just enter the right house first or something. I'm, I'm really not sure. When, when was our first save? I don't know if we can check. There was one there. Uh, yes. Okay, I didn't know if there was a save just before we actually started here. Because, yeah, it, it did mention about, like... I don't think there was anything we could click on. There was no... There was nothing to indicate any of these actually being our house, right? I thought, like, this one kind of seemed the most likely, but... Just because it was more people, it was the middle one. But yeah, there's, like, nothing to click on or anything. So I, I really don't know. I, I feel like I had to have missed something. This house was the most significant. I feel like this was the unique one. But again, there's, there's nothing to really click on or... Because, I mean, could the implication this was our family, but... It sounds like we've been dead a very long time. So I would think that no one here, like, they would be long dead if there was anyone we knew. Yeah, I don't know. I, I really would would have wanted a bit more there, like, because I'm, I'm not clear on that. Like, I don't know. It feels more like I missed something, but I, I don't know. Um, yeah, I guess there's two endings, though. I don't think I'm going to worry about the other one. I'm happy to have just play through. Um, but I guess that would have been... I'm actually not sure what the turning point would have been. Like, what choices did we have? We had the look away or not. We had... At the beginning, I assume we could have gone the other way instead of through the tunnel, maybe? Am I, am I forgetting a choice? Oh yeah, we had the, the show mercy or not. So maybe if we, like, showed mercy and then kept looking away or something, maybe it would have been different? Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me know what you thought, Said I'm, I'm kind of mixed on this one. Um, I'm so glad I played it, you know, I'm happy playing through all these, it's been a, it's a good, ex good experience. But yeah, for now I'm saying thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoyed. Uh, links in the description if you want to check out any of the other uh, Game Jam games, otherwise yeah, just be well, and I'll talk to you in something else soon. Bye bye.